to talk about an experience I had in September 2021 um, while summiting Kinla Peak in the North Fork of Glacier National Park. Um, am I, are you, Altar, are you? Yeah, okay, oh, sweet. Yeah. yeah, you go ahead and run it to the, to the next slide. Um, so I embarked on this journey with my three friends, Jason, Josh, and Grant, and our goal was to um, do this round trip in 24 hours. So we began our day at 3 a.m. in our canoe and we started paddling out there. Um, and from the get-go, we were just experiencing a lot of little hiccups in our trip. Um, but very trivial things and not anything that would really constitute us turning around at that point. So some examples are like Jason got stung by six bees. Um, all four of us had headlamp issues. The North Fork had just received a lot of rain and so um, it was particularly a wet bushwhack um, but really there was nothing that objectively at that point constituted us turning around until we reached this point. Go ahead. So we reached this overlook. This is Kinnerly Peak and then it's Sister Peak, Kinnerly Peak right here. And this is my friend Grant. And at this point I looked at my group and I said, guys, are we still doing this? Um, and if you have to say that out loud, chances are you might not want to keep going. Um, but everyone said yes. And I said yes too. Um, I was biased because the prior year at this exact overlook, I bailed because of weather um, in the pursuit of Kimla. And also in the summer of 2021, my goal was to do the five of the six tenders in Glacier National Park that I hadn't yet done. And Kimla was the last on my list. It was the end of September, um, and it felt like my really like my last chance to summit this peak. And so I had a, admittedly, quite an egotistical drive to want to continue. And so we did continue. Feel free to go to the next slide. Um, and we made it to the summit, but the price to pay to make it to the summit was that I had my first and to this day one of really one of my only close call falls um, while trying to summit this peak. It's uh, not technical climbing, but the scrambling can get pretty exposed at the summit block. And as you can see, the mountain was very wet. Um, not good conditions to, to be scrambling in, and a foothold broke, and I had to catch myself from falling, gashed up my leg a little bit. But um, I don't want to uh, overplay it. I also don't want to underplay it. There was not a severe physical injury, but because of my newness to the sport at that point in, in 2021, I had only been out of Montana for two years. It really just shook, shook me up. Um, so we summited, but at that point I really lost my appetite. I had a really hard time eating after, after that. And we were only halfway through our day, and so it was imperative that I continued to fuel, but I found it really hard to keep down fuel. So. Um, after this summit, we descended back down into the glacier basin, and we continued to have a troublesome day. Um, we remained in whiteout conditions, and then we just started running into a bunch of bears. Um, we <laughs> ran into a mama bear and two cubs, and a couple hours later, when the sun was setting, we ran into two more grizzly bears. And almost, almost immediately after we ran into those last two grizzly bears, this thunderstorm started forming over Mount Carter across the way, uh, across the lake to be very specific. And Mount Carter is a very ominous looking peak on its own, and so to see lightning striking it just caused my stomach to drop. Um, it's kind of tough to geographically explain where we were, but our most efficient way to get back down to the lake was to hike over this ridge that would act, uh, allow us to access a, a sloping hill that would take us back down to the lake. So we decided as a team, we're gonna try and beat out this thunderstorm, get on the ridge, and get down before the storm comes to our side of the lake. But at this point, we had been out for 20 hours and we were not moving very quickly. So we did not beat out the storm. So we were on this ridge as the storm crossed the lake and was on top of us. And I remember standing on the ridge and looking down where we had just been standing 25 minutes prior, watching lightning repeatedly strike into the basin at, a, at an elevation lower than where I was standing in that moment. And that's when I suggested, I think we're supposed to baby right now and get into lightning position. Um, but I wasn't really sure what to do, and the rest of my group wasn't really certain either, and we just kind of stood there in silence until the loudest, clearest voice in our group said, the worst thing we can do is just continue to stand here. I think we should just keep moving forward, hike up so that we can get down. So we continued to hike up in elevation in the middle of this storm, and it was when we got to the highest point of the ridge that one particular bolt of lightning struck a lot closer to us where it kind of flashes, blinds your vision, and the, the edges of your vision, vision tinge purple. Um, and that, that bolt of lightning spooked all of us so bad that we were able to start descending at that point and we all started running down. Um, I had a very clear voice of doubt and hesitation ring through to me in that moment. 
where I remember thinking to myself, none of this is worth it. This day was not worth the consequence that I'm paying now, but not only that, none of my good days in the mountains are worth the potential consequences. Um, and that voice of doubt and hesitation really stuck with me. We got back down to the lake, the storm passed us, we were able to canoe back to the trailhead without any inclement weather, and we finished our trip in 26 hours. Um, so all in all, it seems like a successful trip, except for the fact that I felt like I had opened this dark box within me with that question of whether this is worth it or not, that I so desperately wanted to shove close, not address, um, but I couldn't quite close it. So, let me go ahead. Um, after, that was my last trip of 2021, and then I moved to Missoula to continue my undergraduate degree. Um, and I started to really struggle. Um, I started to have repeated dreams that I was falling off of peaks and that I was getting stuck in storms. And they got so bad, so perpetual, that I reached out to my other climbing members and I asked them, are you struggling after this trip too? To which they responded, um, sorry, what's that yet? So they all responded, no. They were very encouraging and supportive of me, but it was not something that any of them were personally struggling with. Um, and that made me feel a tremendous amount of shame being that I was the only woman in my group, I felt like maybe I'm being too dramatic. Maybe I'm being too emotional. After all, weather is a part of mountaineering. Maybe I need to accept that this is just part of the adventure. Um, and so I pushed it down and I didn't talk to many people about this for um, the entire calendar year really of 2022. Uh, the summer of 2022, I got out into the mountains, but only four or five times and I was quite anxious the entire time. Um, and then at the end of 2022 in the summer, I committed to an FKT attempt, um, planned it out, invited my friend Emily, and um, not because I had the legs for it at the time, not because I was psychologically ready, but because I was so desperate, I was clinging to this mountain identity, and I was so desperate to reaffirm that to myself that I felt the need to, to take off this, take a huge bite that I couldn't chew. Um, and subsequently, I couldn't follow through on that trip. And it was only until I um, took, brought a true friend like into the crossfire of some unresolved baggage that I realized this wasn't something that I could just brush off, get back out into the mountains and resolve there. I had to receive professional help. And so I started working with my therapist, Galen, who is a really wonderful woman. And um, we touched on the shame piece a lot in our sessions. Um, and she also gave me some concrete bits of wisdom to remember as I was um, healing from this trauma. So you can go ahead. Um, she suggested that it's not that I'm a woman or socialized as a woman, it's not that I'm too emotional, it's not that I'm too dramatic, it's that um, when our body interprets something as traumatic, it has just as much to do with the state of our nervous system as we're experiencing that trauma than it is about the stimulus itself. So to put that more concretely, my nervous system took a lot of punches that day. Everybody on our team took a lot of punches, but I was the one in my team that had this fall. I was the one that was struggling to eat. Um, and as a result, that thunderstorm was like the final KO punch that, uh, that my nervous system could not deflect. Go ahead. So while I was in therapy for this, I actually didn't feel like it was working or helping me at all. Um, I just felt like I was talking and talking and talking about it and not getting better. And the reason I felt this way was because through the winter of now 2022 and the spring of 2023, I was running a lot in Missoula and these weird things would happen to me. This is the Waterworks Trailhead, and as some of you know, there's, there's a train station nearby. And when the trains start and stop, it creates this really loud boom noise. And anytime I would run, no matter what the weather was like, I would hear that boom, and my body would get this jolt of adrenaline until I could logically remind myself that it's the train station and not thunder. Some other things that I still experience, though far less frequently, um, than I was at this point was my mind. I, there are just tricks of the mind that still happen. Like if I'm running at night and if I have a headlamp on and it's particularly foggy, the way that the light refracts against the fog looks like flashes of lightning. Or if I have moisture droplets on my eyelashes and I blink, it looks like lightning on the horizon. Um, and in May and June of 2023, we had a particularly stormy spring. And anytime the clouds would get dark, if I was running in Missoula, I um, would not be able to control my breath and I would start to hyperventilate and panic. And this was incredibly discouraging because this was happening in conjunction with being, with th being in therapy. And so I started to wonder um, if I was permanently broken, if I would ever feel safe in the backcountry again, if I couldn't feel safe even running in Missoula. Um, and 
And if that was the case, who, who was I? Because my, even now to this day, I still struggle with separating what I do from who I am. Go ahead and go to the next slide. Um, so heading into this most recent season, 2023, I really had no idea what kind of season it was gonna be for me. Um, my first week out, I decided to go back to the North Fork to try and do a different peak. And that terrain was just like too close for comfort and I failed out of anxiety. But I didn't let that discourage me. Um, the following week, I decided to go a little bit easier on myself than going back to the North Fork and went to Two Medicine. Um, and I got on some familiar terrain. I did some peaks that I had done before to get comfortable. And um, there was a third peak nearby that I could add on if I was feeling okay enough for it. And I was. Um, but that doesn't mean that this day wasn't hard. It was actually incredibly challenging. And I wanted to turn around so many times. There was like this psychological combat going on where I knew I was safe, but my body was also screaming at me to turn around. And that um, leads me to this point that to me, anxiety is a tool. It's not something we need to suppress or ignore. And I've had many circumstances where it's indicated to me that I'm not prepared for whatever I'm about to undertake. But also, when the nervous system is impaired, it doesn't know up from down or right from wrong. Um, it can start giving me signals that I'm in danger when I'm not actually in danger. And this is an essential part of really any trauma recovery is learning to discern those emotions. Um, and that's been a key ingredient in being able to bounce back from this experience. Um, you can go ahead. So after that day in two medicine, I went back to my therapist and I said, I don't mean to be offensive, but that first day, successful day back out in the mountains was way more helpful than any of our talk sessions. And she, she was like, that's exactly the point. The talking was not gonna fix you, it was not gonna heal you, but rather it was going to prime your brain to be ready to receive that wisdom from the mountains when you did decide to go back out. And um, after that day, I continued to ease back into my season this last year. Um, I followed up my first technical climb in the park um, and I was just thinking that's like, let me know if you think you've had an Ikea bag at a higher elevation than that. Um, <laughs> uh, I um, eased back into doing trips alone, which seems counterintuitive to my message here about risk management, but to me it's, it's something that I've decided is worth it, which I'm gonna touch on in a second. And I was really hopeful that I, I would be able to return to that baseline of the things that I know I love to do and want to feel comfortable doing. Um, and then at the end of the summer we did a traverse of the Livingston Range, which is where Kitla Peak is. And being able to do that high route was uh, such a milestone for me because it, it helped me realize that not only was I back at my baseline, but I was back to challenging myself and pushing myself in the mountains the way that I wanted to. Um, so one conclusion I uh, came to in this healing process is that my brain will do or say anything to myself to protect itself and to survive. And so I understand it makes perfect sense to me why when I was running away from this uh, very real life threatening hazard of lightning that my brain told me none of this is worth it. But that doesn't mean I have to believe, believe, fully believe every thought that comes into my brain. And that doesn't have to be the end of my story in the mountains. What that trip was the end of for me though was um, blindly choosing to take risks without uh, really assessing what I was doing. Um, I just want to have my notes ready for this last part because this was really like the, the purest conclusion that I came to um, from going through this experience. Uh, but having this, having this formula of like weighing what level of consequence I could face versus the probability of that consequence occurring has been such a helpful equation or formula um, to have as a tool in my back pocket so that I can independently assess each choice that I'm wanting to make or not wanting to make in the backcountry. And something that's so beautiful about all of our sports in the mountains is that every single person in this room is gonna have a slightly different answer to this formula, depending on what situation, situation you're in. Um, and what I wanted to close on is that in this equation, we must never forget that the most severe consequence that we do run the risk of facing is one that is grave and fatal in its nature. We can do everything right, we can make every decision correctly and still reach that point. If I have to reach that conclusion in the mountains, I hope that I can go with a mind and a heart that's at peace with who I am and all of the decisions that I've made leading up to that point. I can only achieve that inner peace if I'm thinking consciously about the choices that I'm making. Um, so that leads me to here to this point. Um, I, I can't say that I'm healed, nor do I think I would want to be able to say that I'm healed because I think that, did, that trip did permanently change who I am. 
but it has changed me uh, for the better because I, I consider myself a more thoughtful person now. And I think that's contributed to my growth as an athlete and as a human being. Um, and yeah, you wanna, cool. And I, I'm just really grateful to be here sharing this story with all of you because like I said, there was truly a time where I wouldn't even talk to my friends about this story. Um, so to be standing up here sharing about it in this capacity now is just a really surreal moment for me. And, um, and I really appreciate it, so thank you.